Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is web page layout, grid based layout. As I suggested in the last video, I think the technique you should be using to lay out your web pages is the grid based layout. You can go ahead and use Flexbox for individual sections of your website, but the overall layout of your website should be done with grid based layout. So in this video, we're going to show you how to actually do that. Now, there's several things that you need to know in order to get grid-based layout to work. The first one is how to define the grid. And it turns out there's a bunch of different ways to define the grid. And so we're going to show you some of those techniques. But if you really want to get into it, there's a lot more techniques available than the ones I'm going to be showing you in this video. And the second thing you need to know is how to place elements onto the grid. If you're doing something simple, that's super straightforward. And if you're doing something fancy, it does get a little bit more complicated. So we'll take a look at a little bit of your options there as well. So this is what our first example is going to look like. We have a basic two by two set of squares. And so um, this is what our HTML looks like. We just have four divs. And remember that one of the nice things about grid based layout is we aren't really doing anything special in our HTML in order to get our layout to work the way we want. We just have a bunch of elements in the HTML and we can just place those elements in the HTML anywhere we want on our website by using this grid based layout. Okay, so as I mentioned, we do need to define the grid and we should define a parent that is containing the grid. Now, if you want to use the entire web page as the grid, which is what we're doing here, then go ahead and use the body as the parent for the grid. So I'm saying the entire body should be displayed as a grid. If you want something fancier, like you have grids nested inside of grids, well, then you're going to have to decide what the appropriate parent is. But if you want the entire web page again to be set up as a single grid, just go ahead and use it on the body. And that's what I'm going to do for uh, these examples here. Okay, so body display type is grid, and then I'm just going to go ahead and define the number of columns and the number of rows using grid template columns and grid template rows. So I have two columns, 100 pixels each. I have two rows, 100 pixels each. And then um, the way I'm getting it to actually display that border so it's really obvious what's going on is uh, I've got uh, the setting here for the border. Border one pixel solid blue with a two pixel margin. Okay, and then I just place the elements on the grid. So there are a number of different style properties to do this. I'm going to uh, keep things simple. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use grid column start and grid row start. This is going to allow us to uh, place elements on the grid um, just using two different properties. Grid column start, grid column end, grid row start and grid row end. Uh, we'll talk about the end elements a little bit later on. For now, if you just go ahead and put a start element, it will just go ahead and put it in that particular grid element. You don't have to worry about the end. The end's only going to be necessary if we're doing something fancy. Okay, so I'm putting uh, the element with ID A in 1-1, one, one, element B in 2-1, C in 1-2, and D in 2-2. Two, two. And just remember, because this is grid-based layout, uh, this is not going to be limit it by what the HTML looks like. If we want to put these in reverse order, if we want to put them, you know, wherever we want to put them, we can go ahead and put them there. Um, you can also stack the items on top of each other, but uh, don't do that. You'll actually be able to see the text jumbled on top of each other. That's probably not what you want to do. And uh, if you want one of the elements to not show up for some reason, like maybe um, you've got it set up so that it looks great on a desktop computer, but it's being displayed on a tablet and, you know, you just don't have space for everything and you don't want to have to do some scrolling. Um, remember, you can use the display none on one of these elements and it will just completely disappear. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, there are different options for laying out the grid. Uh, and so here you're seeing that we've got different measurement types. One of the interesting measurement types is the percentages. And so you can see um, I'm laying out the grid 30% in the first column, 50% in the second column, and 20% in the third column. And in the rows, I'm actually using set measurements with inches, centimeters, and millimeters. So the main point of this is you've got a bunch of different measurement types that you can use. And in fact, you can kind of do some mixing here as well. 
One interesting measurement type that's provided is the FR measurement type. FR stands for fractional, and uh, it basically provides a fraction of the remaining amount of space after the fixed measurements are used. So here I've got three columns. The first column is 75 pixels, and the last column is 150 pixels. So that takes up 225 pixels. And depending upon how wide the web browser window is, we could have a lot of remaining space, or we could have just a little bit of remaining space. That FR, that second column I've got marked as one FR, that takes all the remaining space. So, you know, if, if, if I've got a really wide window, then one FR is a lot of space, and I've got a narrow window, then maybe one FR isn't so much space, but it's the amount of space left after the 75 pixel fixed amount and the 150 pixel fixed amount have been used FR will be whatever is left over. Now, I can actually divide this up among several columns. So um, here what we've got is we've got the first column 75 pixels, and then the, the second column's 1 FR, and the third column's 2 FR. And so what this means is that, again, we take the fixed amount, that's the 75 pixels, we subtract that out from the total width of the window, and the remaining space will be divided amongst all the FR segments. Now, since we said one, the second column's one FR and the third column's two FR, what this means is the, the third column will be twice as big as the second column. So you can see here, second column is one third of the remaining space and the third column is two thirds of the remaining space. And the way this works is you just count up the number of FRs and divide it out. So, you know, if I had uh, one of the columns was five FRs, and one of the columns was two FRs, and the third column was one FR. I would add the five, the two to the one, and I would say, oh, each FR is one eighth of the remaining amount of space. So, you know, just divides it up by the FRs based on uh, whatever amount of FRs you put in each of the individual columns. Okay, in order to do this next example, we need to have a row span and column span. So uh, you can see Bravo goes across two columns and Alpha goes across two rows and Charlie goes across three columns. Now, as I mentioned, there's a variety of different ways to do this and um, some of them are described in the handout, but the one I'm just gonna talk about here is uh, we're just gonna go ahead and put a start and an end. Okay, so here's the body, uh, you know, looks exactly the same as before. Um, I've just got four different divs. And then here is my uh, style rule for the body saying I've got a grid um, and there are three columns and three rows and they're all 100 pixels each. And then here's the settings for A, which is uh, alpha has the ID A, Bravo has the ID B. And um, this gets a little bit messy. So if... I only want to take up a single column, I'm just going to provide a start. If I want to take up a single row, I'm just going to provide the start. I'm only going to provide the end if I want to go across either multiple columns or multiple rows. So in this case, um, A or alpha goes across two rows, and so I need both a start and an end. Now here's the part that gets a little bit messy. Uh, the end is actually not the last, and I don't know why they did this, but the end is not the last row or column in the element. It's actually the row or column beyond the last element. So here I want alpha to go across rows one and two. And so I list the row end as row three. So again, I'm covering rows one and two and my end row is gonna be listed as three. It's one beyond the end of the element. Um, for Bravo, which has the ID B, um, I'm going across several columns. So the first column, the start column is column two. I'm also going to go across column three. And then my end column is going to be listed as four, which doesn't even exist here. But again, list the column or row beyond the end of where the element goes. So I'm going from two to four where the two is included and the four is actually excluded. So two to four, where I'm actually covering two to three. Again, I think it's pretty confusing. I don't know why they decided to do this way, but that's the way they decided to do it.
Okay, and then here's a C and D, um, and you can see that Charlie covers uh, columns one, two, and three. So it starts with column one, and it ends in column four because again, it's one past the end of whatever's cover. We're covering one, two, and three, and so the end is four. Um, and then with D, uh, it's only covering a single column and a single row, so I don't need to provide either a column end or a row end. Okay, one of the issues that comes up, um, previously I've preset the height and the width, and uh, I made sure that the text fit very nicely. What happens if I've got a long amount of text and uh, either I don't know how long that text is or um, I've set the height to a specific value and it doesn't fit. So that's those are the situations we're gonna look at. Let's first of all say, you know, I think the most common situation is we don't know how long the text is going to be, but however long it is, we want it to fit. All right, so we've got a couple choices here. Uh, if this is true of all of our elements, uh, we can just not specify a height. So you're generally going to specify width, but you don't have to specify height. If you don't specify height, what will happen is each of the rows is going to be as tall as it needs to be to fit all the text available. So you can see here, alpha was really long. So alpha has a title, it's too long to fit, blah, 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 blah. And so what happened was the square just, that whole row just expands out to take however much space is needed for the longest or tallest item. And then the second row here with Charlie and Delta, they didn't take very much space at all, so they're super short. So just, you know, don't provide uh, any settings for the rows and you'll probably get the behavior you want. Alternatively, you can explicitly mark the rows as auto. So basically what we're saying here is the default behavior is the auto behavior and the auto behavior, short for automatic, is to just provide as much space as needed. Okay, why would we want to use this auto when that's the default behavior? Well, we might want to use auto if we actually have a mix where some of the rows we want to have auto and some of them we don't. So in this case, I want the first row to be auto, but the second row I want to just sit set to 100 pixels. Um, so this works totally fine. Uh, now, let's go back to that previous case where I said, hey, what if there's a fixed height and it doesn't actually fit in it? Okay, so here on the left, you can see that uh, alpha did not fit in its square and it just kept on running over and you can actually see Charlie along with the text there. And then in the second case, it just got cut off. And so what's gonna happen here is the default behavior is if it doesn't fit in the row, it's just gonna keep on going. Uh, and if something else goes below it, well, that's just gonna go ahead and get placed uh, if you're explicitly placing it, instead of using the auto we talked about earlier, uh, they'll just show up on top of each other. On the other hand, if you want to, if you explicitly want to just cut it off, you can by setting overflow to hidden. So um, here's the first example uh, where we don't have overflow set to hidden um, and it just keeps on running over. Um, and you can see uh, I have no settings on a, that's alpha, uh, that's the ID for the alpha square, other than just setting the column start and the row start. And then in the second example, I set overflow hidden and you can see it just gets chopped off. So depending on which, well, I can't imagine you, it, 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 there are probably very few cases where you actually want the text to overrun and overlap with something else. So you know, generally you're either gonna wanna set it to auto or you're gonna wanna set it to uh, hidden. Okay, last thing. Uh, I wanted to go over a, a more realistic example. So we've got our complex example from uh, the previous video. Um, and of course, there are several ways to do this. We could do some nesting, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go ahead and create a, a grid here. Um, we're gonna create a three column, two row grid. And, uh, and then here's my HTML. I'm going to put everything inside of a div with ID main, uh, and then that can be used for things like centering, as we've previously seen, putting, an, uh, 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 putting a border around the entire 
page contents. Uh, there's a variety of reasons why we might want to do this, but then I'm just going to put the the, re the new stories just as divs right there uh, inside of the div equals main. Um, and so again, the benefit here, as opposed to any of the other techniques that we talked about in the last video is um, I can move these around. There's nothing in my HTML here that is locking me into a particular layout. So, you know, if I, if I want to start off by having the record Fulbright numbers, that's the main story. I just want to show up on the left. If at some other point I want to say that the key thing to talk about is that Professor Gretchen Daly is funded on biodiversity, I can just move that over to the left. I can move any of these elements to any of these squares I want. I can determine at some later time which of these uh, stories should span multiple rows or multiple columns. None of that is locked into my HTML. My HTML does not specify any of that information. It just says, here are a bunch of stories. All right, and here I'm defining my grid. Uh, I am going to put this on the main div that we saw a minute ago rather than putting on the body. So you can see I'm setting up three columns here and I'm not bothering to set up any rows. I'm just gonna use the auto setting for the rows. And then uh, I just go ahead and put the elements down. Um, in some cases, like the record Fulbright number, uh, that's going to go across multiple rows. So I have to start with row one. I wanted to cover row two, and I have to remember that annoying the end row is the one past the row that uh, I'm actually using. So I'm using row one and two, so the end row is row three. Um, similarly, for the invention for a diagnosis, that's starting in column two. It's going to cover columns two and three. And so the end column is column four. Um, there's not a whole lot else going on here, except for you will notice that I am putting some margin in here to get some spacing. There's a bunch of ways to do the spacing. I didn't really want to teach you guys additional style properties. So there are some grid specific ways of doing this, but based on what you already know, you can just go ahead and play with the margins. All right, so this gives you a good start on how to use grid-based layout to create uh, some interesting layouts. Next lecture for the CS105 students, we're going to dig in deeper. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we're actually going to recreate parts of the New York Times and parts of the Washington Post using uh, grid-based layout. I'll talk to you guys soon.